say, time to get into our SANFL update from yesterday's round of action for Farmers Union Ice Coffee. And remember, it's a Farmers Union Ice Coffee or it's nothing. And the results of the three matches that went down yesterday as we take a look into round nine. Uh, Norwood with a good win over the West Adelaide. A fantastic win there by Norwood with Wilson kicking two. And you can see the, the Adelaide side had a very good win over the Eagles in a, in a big upset. More than that in a moment. Um, five goals from Robinson and three from Callanan. And then Sturt over South Adelaide with Code kicking six and Bartlett two and Tamley very influential in that game. So wonderful round of football there. And the ladder as it sits at the moment into round nine on the back of those games looks as follows, uh, Travis. Port Adelaide on top, seven and one. Uh, everyone questioning whether they're too strong, but Sturt, they've been the surprise package, Jammer, haven't they? They've really jumped up. They've been poor the last couple of years. Eagles dropped one uh, yesterday to the Crows, which is a big surprise because Adelaide have really struggled so far, but they've now put uh, two in a row. Yeah, and I would have thought Eagles are one of the uh, favourites to head up the SNFL Premiership as well, along to try and chase down Port Adelaide. Maybe nor would you put them in that bracket too. But Do you, th uh, do you think it's a bit of a case of uh, Heath Uni's team now getting to a stage where actually familiar with each other because mm. you know you've got players coming in from all sorts it looks as if now they're they're putting a couple of wins together they're knowing each other's plans well and now they're getting it on the scoreboard yeah i think you're right traders i think it's again it's the players coming in isn't it to try and feel and find their way and i guess the advantage of what port adelaide and adelaide have been able to do is actually play players in the roles that they want to be able to develop and, and if you speak to both the clubs they're really happy with the progress the best players are all listed players all five of the six were mckernan riley paul pleasure Hardy and, and Crouch. So they're getting depth here, Jamo, the Adelaide team in the SA NFL. Yeah, I think what's a good one, Brent Riley, 199, so you think he'll come back to play his 200th very soon. Paul Pleasure, I'm not too sure. He's just really fallen away. He's one of the most talented and gifted, but Matt Crouch, he's a, he's a player of the future, and Brad's not that far away also. Well, you mentioned Paul Pleasure. Is it injuries, or what's the reason he's playing at that level? I think it's just through form. He's seemed to have sort of lost his way a little bit at the moment. And he's, at one point, I would have thought he's the most gifted and talented player in that side. But he's just really struggled when he's gone a forward. And I think the Crows not necessarily got his role right. I think he's a, he's a forward. Um, they've pushed him, tried to play a big body midfielder. He's not that midfielder. He's always had those soft tissue injuries, Jamo, of late. So I think if you look at those names, Riley and Paul Pleasure, they're too good to be playing in the SNFL. For me, McKernan hasn't done enough. But the thing is, Adelaide's now getting a reasonable contribution from players in similar positions who are younger. Yeah. And that's what happens. If you don't perform in your older player, you get cast aside and younger guys take your role. And I think Charlie Cameron coming back into the side yep. too, Hutchie, is going to make it difficult for Paul. Paul Adelaide going to be hard to beat in the SNFL business end, aren't they? Big game today. Yeah, big game again today. But I think their key, their form has been consistent. Uh, Gary Hocking has got them going very, very well. Jacob yeah. Surgeon, former power players involved down there as well. But uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, question marks about what's going to happen with this review at the end of the year. Port Adelaide changes anyway in terms of their recruiting zones and bits and pieces but I'll be honest as a poor, former Port boy they've surprised me they've done very very well and they've really improved and, and I think we can't underestimate what you talked about before Gemma all on the same page all playing to a same plan and all working in the, a similar football program amongst two teams that's got to be a bonus. Sturt have been a big mover they've now gone to second on the table one of the reasons for that has been the efforts of Ben Hansen who is in state representative form he spoke during the week with our own Mitch Cleary. Well Ben, there's finally a bit of buzz about the Sturt Footy Club at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's been a great start to the season so far and, and yeah, we're, we're playing good footy, it's been good. Yeah. You've been down the dumps for the last few years, what can you sort of add to this year? What's been special about this, the season to date and, and why the rise now? Um, it's probably been this, um, being stable as a footy club, knowing the 21 players that, that you're going to play with on a, on a sad day, not having the Crows and the Port players influencing your teams. and and just bringing in a di different winning culture that, that's been, been quite helpful and we're just playing our 21 roles each player each week and playing exciting footy which has been fantastic. Just your four or five years in the, the league side, how have you seen the improvement of the SNFL as a whole and now two new sides in the Adelaide Crows and, and Port Magpies adding to the quality in the league? Yeah definitely, the SNFL seems to be getting stronger and stronger each year and, and the games are getting harder and harder. It's, it's, it's getting yeah, very fun and, and very fantastic to play. And, and the Crows and the, the Port teams have had big roles this year, obviously with Port dominating up top and being the, being the target for teams like us to beat. And the Crows, yeah, probably struggling a bit with injuries and, and things like that, but still have a, a quite a good list and, and you don't take them very lightly. It's Seamus' third year as senior coach at, at Sturt. How have you seen his progression and um, finally getting the group where he wants him at the moment. Yeah, Seamus, Seamus has been fantastic the last three years. He's been a very good coach and he's, he's helping the younger players like myself develop into to pretty strong league footballers. And I think he's just loving um, having the 21 settled at the start of the season. 
just a bit about your own personal role playing across half forward at the moment. What sort of things are you working on in your game to improve your style? Uh, this year I've really, really worked on my pressure inside 50 and, and I guess tackling and and trying to turn the ball over inside 50 for the for the fellas around the ball. And you've had a solid start to the season. What do you have to do now in the, the back end of 2014 to ensure that you're playing finals footy? I've just got to keep doing the things we're doing well, I reckon, and that, that pressure is, is one that really makes us tick and, and makes us play good footy. So I think if we keep that up and and go go into the state game by next weekend with, with a good win against Centrals this weekend, it'll be good. And well done to Ben Hanson, who's this week's Farmers Union Ice Coffee Medal nomination. It's, of course, the award that's got South Australia talking from Farmers Union. Recognise a player who is hardworking, determined, and has the win-at-all-costs attitude. Five grand up for grabs at the end of the year to the player who is judged the uh, most appropriate. Well, remember, it's a Farmers Union Ice Coffee or it's nothing. And well done to Ben Hanson. A break, some local footy coming your way next right here on Footy SA.